So I have the scarf here and I am going to be um, soaking it first and I have, it's not showing up real well, but there we go, soak. And this is scentless. Uh, this was a free sample, I think. I forget where I came, where this came from. But anyway, I'm going to fill the um, sink up with just some cool water and I'm going to put this in it and swish it around and then I'm going to put this to soak for a few minutes. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. I just discovered that um, my thing that's supposed to hold the drain, let me show you this. We've lived here 14 years. This is the upstairs bathroom. I never really noticed this, but if you pull this up, it's supposed to close the drain, and it doesn't. And I checked the other sink, because there's two sinks in this bathroom, and it doesn't either. How interesting is that? So now I'm going to have to sit here and hold the drain shut the whole time I'm trying to swish this. So yeah, this, this could be a interesting process. So let's get started. Take two. I think I will open this ahead of time because I'm only gonna have one hand. I know my hands are wet, so I can't, can't do it. When in doubt, use your teeth. I'll talk to my dentist later. I was pretty excited. I came upstairs here, which is like, I've, I've come up once before, but it was like one leg at a time. I actually was able to come up the steps one foot after the other for most of the, the stairs. It's like six steps and then there's a landing and then there's another six steps to get up to the second floor. And I was able to do it except for the last three steps. So that's exciting. So how much fun is this having to hold the camera, hold the stopper up, and trying to fill the sink at the same time? Yeah, that's fun. Um, hopefully my finger is not on the speaker and you can hear me. Okay, I'm going to set you down again and put the scarf into, because I can't let go with that hand. There, I think you can see everything that's going on. There we go. We'll just let it sit there for a minute while I just do nothing because I can't let go of the drain. <laughs> Who knew all this time? Well, I can give you a quick tour of the bathroom. I'll just turn the camera around. What everybody, of course, wants to see. There's me. Hello. And there's the other sink. And of course, you know. And I have a, I can't get close enough, but there's a picture on the wall that is diamond art. I'll show you another one in a minute. That is a cross stitch. I'm going to see if I can zoom in so you can see these. There we go. That is a cross stitch. It's based on um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter in the Bible. And I finished this and then realized there's little L's that are all the way down. If you look at the very last one, there's an L and no O-V-E. I did not realize that till years after I finished it. So yeah, it never, the end of it just says L instead of love. So see if this is 
big enough now for you to see. Well, you can see it's a butterfly. And then we have the tub. This is like the exact opposite of the bathroom downstairs. And then behind the door, that's the door that goes into the hall. That is a linen closet, well, half of the linen closet. It's like a bifold door. And then here is the other, this is really awkward with one hand, but anyway, here is the other diamond art that's a butterfly. And then I have two little porcelain butterflies up here that I got from, I think, Home Interiors 35, almost 40 years ago. I used to have three, one broke. So, here I am, back to holding the drain. How exciting is this? Okay, I think we have had enough time elapse. I'm just gonna drain this water out. Now, I don't wanna wring this out because I don't want this to felt. I need to get rid of all the bubbles. Maybe I'll move to the other sink and that way I can just let the bubbles do their thing. I'll turn the camera around here. I hope you didn't get dizzy just now. There we go. I just want to rinse. Sometimes you aren't supposed to have to rinse it out, I don't think, but in this case, because it is going to bleed, I am definitely going to be rinsing it out. So I'm going to hold the camera here for a minute so you can see. I've only rinsed it a couple of times and it really isn't bleeding as much as I anticipated. I mean, I got a little bit, but it was just a faint pink. I did not get any major, like, deep red or anything, which is really great. Normally, you get lots and lots coming out of dark colors, but this is not bad at all. Okay, I am going to try to squeeze the rest of the water out and then we're going to go block it. I do want to make sure I get most of it out because up here um, our bedroom's down on the first floor which for those of you in Europe that would be the ground floor. Um, this is what we would call our second floor but if you're in Europe, this is the first floor of the house. Um, and it's kind of up in an attic, like a Cape Cod. The, the two bedrooms are. Well, the whole floor sits up kind of in an attic type of thing. And it gets cold up here because we don't heat the upstairs any more than we have to since we don't really live up on this floor. And as a result, I have had things mildew that I was blocking and left mildew marks on my sweater that I blocked years ago. And so I just want to make sure that I don't have a whole lot of water in this. And I try not to do it when it's too cold out. I try to wait till the weather's a little bit warmer to block upstairs here. Small things I block downstairs, but something like this that's going to be long, I need to have the big blocking boards and I don't have space for them upstairs or downstairs. So I put them upstairs and I lay them on top of the spare bed that is in the craft cave, because that's also our guest bedroom. One day I would love to have a room that is just for my crafts, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Okay, I've got most of the water squeezed out of it. And we're going to go now and get it blocked. All right, I'm going to be using my blocking pins that I got from Temu. And I'm going to be using 
some blocking wires. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, and this is really stretched out now that it's damp, um, I am going to be running these blocking wires all along the length of the scarf and I'll just be threading it in and out. So I'll see if I can bring this up close so you can see what I am doing. So you can see I'm just stringing it through and I'm going to do this the entire length. It'll probably take about two wires because these wires are each about three feet. So it actually might take four. I'm not sure. We'll start three wires. So we'll see how far we get with this. Okay, I have one side done. This has been, you can see, I have the wire through there and I have pulled it back. And then I've put the wire through here. It did take two and you can see here's where they overlap. So I'm going to show you pinning this end down and you pull this. You don't want to over stretch, but you do want to give it some definite stretch. So I'm going to pull it down and you are going to insert the combs. Right, this, this is like styrofoam inside and it's canvas on the outside. So I want to try to keep a nice straight line. I maybe pulled this just a hair too tight. I think I'm going to do the center part here and then work my way across. Oh, come on, focus. Okay, here's where it overlaps. So I want to put a brace right in front of both of them. And then I'm going to work my way across. And again, I want to try to keep this straight. So you can see there, it's looking pretty good. I might stick a little one right here. Getting this first row here is easy. It's making sure you get it fairly straight on the second one. That's the hardest. So I'll pull part way down. And again, I'm going to go right in front of there. And I want to make sure I'm keeping it about the same width all the way across. You don't want one end of your scarf to be narrow and one end to be wider than the other. Here we go. Now, I could block these, but in all honesty, that's that end's staying pretty straight. I do want to put one directly on the edge here. So use a little short one. Maybe for good measure we'll throw a couple in here. These do not have the blocking bars because there really isn't any need for it. Um, I'm just going to do this so it doesn't shrink up and curl or anything like that. Now let's go to the other side over here. And I'm going to do the same thing, just precautionary to make sure my edge stays nice and straight. Okay, I used all but one, two of these blocking combs. So here is what it looks like, the full length. I'd say it's probably stretched out about four and a half feet, and it's probably in the ballpark of about 10, maybe 11 inches wide this way, and about four and a half feet this way. It is so soft. So we will come back in a day or two and see what it looks like once it's dried out. So here is the scarf and it's all dried so I am going to pull the blocking uh, wires out and pull out the combs and we're going to go from there and see what it looks like and then I will weave in all the ends so 
So the finished scarf ended up about 10 inches wide and it is about four and a half feet across. So I'm going to put it on and model it. Now I am wearing pink, so it's not going to look great against the pink, but you'll get the idea. There you go. Like I said, it doesn't look great against the pink, but it is super, super soft. I haven't woven the ends in because I'm still upstairs. I literally just took it off the blocking board. But there it is. I'm going to enjoy wearing it. Thank you once again to the Yarn Shop Creatively Altered. So thanks so much. I will enjoy this thoroughly and think of you every time I wear it. So yes, super happy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing at the little red uh, subscribe button down below. And I will see you again on Saturday. Bye everybody.